Hey, my name is Daryl Yoder. Uh, greetings from Grand Rapids Theological Seminary in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I uh, serve on the faculty here and provide administrative support, um, administrative leadership over a number of different programs uh, and a lot of the ON efforts. And so greetings to all of you in the ON network. Um, wanted to provide a quick spotlight. I thought I'd use, use the technology we're all getting used to using these days and share a little bit about what we've sort of attempted this year and <laughs> and then what we've actually accomplished. A um, couple quick things. The biggest one I get to um, mention this year, kind of in, in addition to our usual, uh, our ongoing ways of integrating these things um, into our classes, and, and those real quickly would be especially in our theology classes, and um, we have some theology for, for counseling classes that really talk about the vocation of counseling. So there's some inter integrating happening in there as well. And then some of the ministry courses as well, we're able to integrate these topics in. Um, but the things I wanna, I wanna highlight in this, in this spotlight are um, probably th three, three main things. One is a, uh, an attempted pastor's conference that we had. I'll tell you about um, an attempted uh, project with a local church that was going to be really, really cool. And when we get to do it, we, it will be really cool <laughs> and I think really strategic. Uh, and then also a series that a, one of our professors is doing. Uh, I'll mention each of those three things in this in this spotlight. So the first thing, uh, one of my hats at, at Grand Rapids Theological Seminary that I've talked about, uh, written about in previous uh, spotlights for us is our Talking Points program, where I'm able to hold conferences or develop resources that help uh, pastors, ministry leaders, students uh, engage in difficult difficult topics, often really dicey, really dicey topics that have different perspectives and try to lean into it from a distinctly theological perspective um, to bring God's word to bear on really culturally relevant issues. Um, and this year, what we did with our Talking Points program was we um, leveraged our conference as the as the sort of climax as part of what is called the GRTS Fiscal Literacy Project, and uh, that is supported by a grant from the Lilly Foundation uh, through their Economic Challenges Facing Future Ministers initiative. So. Um, I haven't been in leadership over that whole grant project, but I was invited in to provide sort of a, a climax event at the end of that multi-year project and to do a conference that would engage pastors on this area of fiscal literacy. And um, but but we wanted to make it within the realm um, of pastoral well-being, that broader topic of pastoral well-being and fiscal literacy being a piece of that. Um, and really kind of the realities of what pastors face for their own souls, their own hearts, their own well-being, and also issues around identity and calling, um, which, are, which is really similar to the kind of vocational questions, right, that we engage uh, outside the church as well with, with this conversation. And so what we did, we planned a conference. <laughs> it was supposed to happen on March 17th of this year. And our state went into lockdown about four days before that, four or five days uh, before that, and we had to cancel the conference. The theme of the conference was resilience, finding wholeness in ministry by way of the cross. Um, and I'll provide links to this, which you should be able to get to uh, through this spotlight, through the text. Um, resilience, finding wholeness in ministry by way of the cross. We wanted to engage pastors in thinking about how does a pastor stay resilient, stay healthy? How does a pastor practice self-care and prioritize their own well-being, their whole, own wholeness, um, when they're in a calling that is by definition self-sacrificial, right? You're supposed to, we're supposed to be, and we are pouring our, our lives out for others and being there for others to support others. So how does one shift that and think about caring for your own soul? And, and what is the cross? How, how, does, how does caring our cross relate to that, right? And can we find wholeness? We believe we can find wholeness in ministry by way of the cross through, through engaging with Christ and through walking 
uh, with him and following his lead of, of picking up the cross, our crosses, and, uh, and leading others to do the same. So we had uh, several different speakers lined up. Um, Matt Bloom was one of our featured speakers, Dr. Matt Bloom from Notre Dame. His work around flourishing in ministry, flourishing at work was was really really is really really helpful and was really a key part of that um of that effort and um as well as uh the work done by the folks who published uh resilient ministry and the politics of ministry that would be bob dr bob burns dr D donald guthrie and uh dr tasha chapman and just their research around what helps pastors be resilient what helps pastors thrive um, survive and thrive in ministry and then we had a, uh, a theologian or a pastoral care professor and a psychologist here in, in Grand Rapids, uh, Don Jim Gibson, pastor, uh, former pastor. He teaches at Calvin Seminary down the street from us. Had him talking about his work on Frederick Douglass. How did, how did someone like Frederick Douglass, in, in the time that he lived with the experience he had, everything from slavery to freedom to civil war to reconstruction, how did he... It just sort of seems like he maintained a sense of whole, a sense of who he is, a sense of, of robust sense of, of self. Um, and how did he do that? And what can we maybe take away from his life? So he, he was going to speak. And then, and then we also had Dr. Uh, Ingrid Farrow and some of her work on suffering. Uh, she's at uh, Northern Seminary. Um, and how, how just a theology of suffering and, and the role of suffering uh, can help us understand these things. So that was our plan. It was a profound plan. <laughs> we had we had hundreds of people registered to come, and then we had to cancel the conference. So I'm, I'm describing all of that just to say we were able to then make some changes, and we did reclaim and are still reclaiming some of that work. Um, uh, over the summer, we just worked on how do we, what if we unbundled this conference? Um, and so what we what we decided to do, meaning unbundled, meaning all of those speakers, uh, as well as uh, the, the, the prayer introduction that I had planned, um, then I was able to add a couple of more speakers that I didn't have space for in one day. We've unbundled that into a series of virtual events that we've just offered for free. And so this is kind of what everybody's been doing. Uh, but um, it's been really, really interesting and it's been a learning experience and we've had a good, really good response. So it's, we, we turned it into nine virtual events and we actually just did our eighth one this week with uh, Dr. Chuck DeGroat from Western Seminary, uh, uh, author of the book Wholeheartedness um, and a more recent book on narcissism in the church, <laughs> uh, which is an interesting topic to think about for pastors. Um, and then we're going to close our series with Ruth Haley Barton in a few weeks at the end of this month. Uh, of November uh, on her her topic, her book, Strengthening the Soul of Your Leadership. Uh, so we we're, were able to actually add to that list. And so every other week, almost roughly every other week from early August all the way through the end of November, we've been holding every uh, a one hour free kind of right after lunch uh, virtual event, a Zoom, Zoom event, and had people, pastors and ministry leaders and students engaging in those sessions. And that's been, uh, I, I think, even providential, not only that we were going to take up that topic um, right before the pandemic hit, but then that we were able to turn it into a virtual event series, an extended, I know a lot of folks have experienced it as an extended reflection on resilience pastoral well-being and calling um, their identity where do you what's the relationship between your identity and the role that you play as a pastor and this gets to especially this integration of vocation and calling and fiscal literacy um, where uh, the way uh, the Burns and Guthrie and Chapman talk about in resilient ministry where there are aspects of leadership and administration that are inherent to the pastoral call but often feel out they're not expected by pastors that feels like, well, I didn't, I didn't go into ministry for this, um, or this is this feels outside the calling. I want to preach and provide care, and but they're intentional or and 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 inherent parts of pastoral ministry. And so um, we 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 wanted to, and we have been engaging pastors in thinking about their calling and thinking about how they can stay healthy. Um, that was a major. That was the major effort this year, and we've been able to reclaim and have. Uh, and been able to record uh, each of those sessions, and we're providing those um, for pastors and ministry leaders, 
as ways to reflect on their own souls during this really pressing time for pastors. Uh, a lot of pastors are experiencing, especially experience burnout and pressure of, of how do I be a pastor in a pandemic? How do I be a pastor when things are shut down? How do I face the tensions around do I enforce masks or not? And do I um, hold face-to-face -face services or not? Do you know all of those political tensions that come in and I know pastors are carrying in huge ways. So it's been a, a providential topic. Now, um, the second thing I mentioned, uh, a, a conference that we were hoping to hold, and this one hasn't been redone yet, or, but we, I would love to go back to it. But as a part of our, our grant project, we were partnering with the church um, to host what they were calling the whole conference, uh, which, which is about the whole gospel for the whole person. Um, and that was, we were going to frame that, invite our pastors that had come to our conference and invite them to bring their congregants to this church's conference. Um, this was Berea Baptist Church here in Grand Rapids um, as a way to bring all vocations together to think about the same topic. Not only should pastors think about their calling and, and their well-being at, in ministry, but to uh, Dr. Matt Bloom's work, to their point, every vocation ought to be thinking about identity, calling, and well-being at work, right? So that was, that was the, this, this direct, especially direct connection to get pastors thinking about their vocations and their well-being at work and in ministry, in their, in their case, uh, or church-based ministry, and then to invite their people in their congregations to come to that conference that uh, would have engaged people in, in, in their vocations. And so the pastor, uh, Marcus Little, had planned uh, at, the, at the church a number of different workshops um, based on sort of uh, areas of the economy. So, right, the, you know, kind of a workshop for, for professionals or executive level leaders, uh, workshop for kind of what we were he was calling the doers you know uh, might be might be more blue collar might be the trades um, those kind of those kind of vocations and then we had one identified for the tech industry and reflecting on integration of faith in a, the tech world um, I think he had one on the medical field it's a big industry here in, in, in West Michigan and then I think he had one on um, sort of non-paid vocations, caregiving and things like that. Um, and there might have been a couple of others. So I am hopeful that we'll be able to come back to that. But because of all of the, the shutdowns, uh, they canceled that, that conference as well and haven't retooled it in, other, in another way yet. But we hope that we can come back to that. But that, that partnership with a local church to host something at a local church, and we were uh, with our grant, grant funding, going to support some of those expenses and we were kind of part of the planning and and this was a new effort for the church for this church to do a conference so it was fun to kind of come alongside and help them plan that and help them think through that and i'd i, I hope to be able to do that kind of a project in the future it was a it was a, maybe a maybe a suggested model a way that we can partner with the church um, and i know other schools do these kinds of things as well but that was so that's the two main uh two main things throughout this year um some some accomplishment out of it and some disappointment the last thing i'll mention is um our what we call at Grand Rapids Seminary our Thursday evening Bible class. This is something we've had. It's a tradition of ours for for decades, I think. Really, um, every every fall there's a series. One of our professors picks up a topic and brings some of their teaching, some of their research in a Bible class, a weekly Bible class, free and open to the public. And um, so um, this year's picks up. I, what I loved was our one of our theology professors, Dr. Kenneth Reed. Uh, picked up on some of the things we've been working on um, that I've talked about in the past around in, in our spotlight. So as we've thought about the integration of faith and work and economics and, or we've, uh, and, and justice, as we've thought about whole life discipleship and, and issues that flow out of that related to justice, we've, we've done a number of different, uh, made a number of different efforts to reflect on that. Uh, a few years ago, many of you might remember our Everyday Works curriculum that came out where we talked about uh, faith and work and just economics and, and its implications for how we engage poverty and justice issues. Um, and and then this last two years, couple last couple of years, uh, prior to this year, we were we did a series on justice and unity, reflecting theologically about issues related to justice and divisions in the church and how can we sort of heal 
uh, divisions within the church, especially along racial and ethnic lines and gender gender questions. Um, and then this year, uh, what Dr. Reed has done is he's he's picked up a series on, or he's been doing a series on, I want to get the title right, um, Biblical Foundations for Justice, Understanding What the Bible the Bible's teaching about justice. And so just a, a quick description that he wrote, our nation is facing an insurmountable crisis regarding social and racial justice. While many voices are proclaiming their views from sociological and political perspectives, both conservative and liberal, uh, many are not appealing to scripture, right? So, so what he wanted to do with this series, uh, this series will survey the Bible's teachings about public justice and seek to answer the question, what does the Bible teach about justice and how should Christians respond in light of it? So that's been a series he's been in the middle of for the last number of weeks. And he had to do something new, too. He had to go virtual. And so he's been doing it through uh, Zoom, I think, and uh, had a number of people engaging with him. So none of these things, the formatting, having to go out virtual, is none of it's ideal for, I think, any of us. But uh, it's been fun to see. Uh, us continue to work on these kind of topics and thinking about what is what does whole life discipleship look like and how can we help pastors and ministry leaders engage these things. Uh, so in addition, like I said, in addition to our integration and classwork, those are some of the uh, sort of programmatic things that we've done this last year and uh, saw some success and saw some real setbacks, which I know a lot of my colleagues at other schools are facing some, some of the same things. So I, I hope that's a helpful spotlight. Uh, greetings to all of you. Hope to see you again.